Hi, this is Dr. John Preston from Alliant International University in San Francisco. And I want to talk to you about two articles that have recently come out that really underscore the tremendous importance of children and teenagers getting adequate sleep. A study done back in 2004 showed that between 1904 and 2004, Americans on average are sleeping one and a half hours less per night. And the real question is, to what degree can we reduce total sleep time and not have it interfere with the ability to function well emotionally and cognitively. William Shakespeare said it all many years ago, sleep is a bath and bomb of hurt minds. And when people don't get adequate sleep, they pay a price. If we can see the first slide, please. This is a graphic representation of different stages of sleep during the night with the well-known REM rapid eye movement sleep at the top where lots of dreaming occurs and non-REM sleep stages one, two, three, and four. It's in uh, non-REM sleep, especially stages three and four, that human beings get the majority of slow-wave sleep. If I could have the next slide, please. Slow-wave sleep is also referred to as restorative sleep or deep sleep. And in research studies dating back 20 years, it's been clear that if people are, are deprived of slow-wave sleep, they pay a price in terms of daytime fatigue, cognitive problems, especially uh, difficulties paying attention, and some emotional dysregulation. And for most people, that would be in terms of decreased frustration tolerance and irritability. So let's take a look at these two articles. Next slide, please. This article that was published in the journal Sleep interviewed uh, 15,659 uh, parents and, and teenagers, so a very large sample size, grades 7 through 12. Next slide, please. What they did is they looked at bedtimes and reports of mood problems, especially depression and suicidal ideas in the 12 months prior to being interviewed. And what they found is that uh, a number of parents would have mandatory bedtimes at 10 o'clock at night, and to the surprise of the researchers, most adolescents were actually compliant with this. Next slide, please. The study was important because it matched for age, sex, ethnicity, and parental mar marital status, which are important variables. And what they found, in a very convincing kind of fashion, was that later bedtimes, and this is when kids are allowed to stay up as late as they want, going to bed at 11 o'clock or, or 12 o'clock at night, were associated with significant increases in depression and suicidal ideas. Next slide, please. Later than midnight versus going to bed before 10 p.m., you can see by the slide that 24% more likely to be depressed with the later bedtimes, and 20% more likely to have suicidal ideas that were experienced during the, the previous year. The next study, and next slide please, also coming out this year by Owens et al. in the Archives of Adolescent Medicine, looks at something that's been recognized for a long time, and that is teenagers, their circadian cycle begins to shift. It's not just that they like to stay up late and sleep in, but there's an actual shift in the circadian cycle where it would be normal to have later bedtimes and sleep in the next day. On this slide you can see that what they did is they, they looked at uh, high school students, grades 9 through 12, uh, 201 students, and they did an experiment. And what they did is they delayed the start of school for the first class uh, just a small amount from 8 o'clock to 8.30, taking into consideration that maybe shifting the schedule would make a difference in terms of outcomes. And our last slide, please. What they found was in doing this, first off, the students got more sleep on average about 45 more minutes of sleep per night. But the important thing here is significant improvement in terms of decreased daytime fatigue, increased alertness, and decreased depression. In another video that, that we're going to put up on YouTube soon, I'm going to be talking about substances that interfere with deep sleep, which is also a very critical issue. But I think these data strongly suggest that having parents who are involved and really making sure that teenagers get adequate amounts of sleep. And of course, children also. These two studies however, were with teen teenagers. The optimal amount of sleep that most teenagers get is, uh, need is nine hours a night. And yet many, many, if not the majority of teenagers, are chronically sleep deprived. Sleep does matter, and the implications are important in terms of school performance, but also emotional health. Okay, thank you for listening.